That's a good place to take a moment and give thanks. I'm glad he sent an army after me. I was alone. I was lost. I was afraid. I didn't know which direction to go. But I'm grateful that he sent an army just for you. Just for you, he sent an army. I'll let you get settled in. Just talk a couple of moments here and then we'll continue in worship. Thank you, Pastor Derek. It's perfect. Thank you. Good morning. Smile at somebody and make them feel good. Come on. We're going to have a great day today. It's already a great day. You know how I know that? This is the day the Lord made. You didn't think you made this day, did you? That's good. Y'all look so beautiful, I tell you. If you could just see how beautiful it looks up here. I want to encourage you. Thank you for being here. I want to encourage everybody that's watching to come be a part. It's important when we gather together like this. It's true. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian anymore. And standing in your car makes you a garage. We know. But there's something about the fellowship and the synergy and the worship corporately that's very powerful. The Bible promises us freedom. Yes? But it does not promise us independence. Oh, come on, preacher. Promises freedom, not independence. We're interdependent. We're connected together as one family. You don't want to go at it alone. That's why we have each other and we need each other. So I encourage anybody watching... Anytime we have the opportunity, we gather together. We spend time, we fellowship, we love on one another. We need your voice. We need a strong choir. Mario can't do it alone. Is that right, Mario? You need help? I want to jump in this morning. I want to say we're going to start doing some things that you'll see with some QR codes. It is my intent. I want to meet with every single person, family, individual, couples, however you want to meet for about a 30-minute meeting. Um, Over the next coming months, it's my intent to meet with every single person twofold. Number one, to get to know you better. Number two, to figure out how I can add value. That's my job, remember? That's, That's my job. Figure out how I can increase, help you, add value to the value that Christ has in you and how how we can do that together. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. I prefer to do it in person right here uh, at the church or wherever, but I want to meet with every person, get to know every single person and how we can learn and grow and get better at what we do. Um, We can do it by Zoom if you can't make that, but I hope you'll take advantage of it. And don't be a chicken. Let's meet together. See how we can help and grow. Is that good? Y'all not in unison today. Only about 15 of you clapped. But we'll try to get that together. I'm I'm so grateful, um, and I'm going to jump right in. I'm so grateful this last week, um, God challenged me more than I've been challenged in a long time. I was in Evansville, Indiana, and yes, that was part of the challenge. Uh, If you're from Evansville, Indiana, I'm sorry. (laughs) It's a beautiful place like all cities. Um, It it was a little different for me. But I was there for a youth camp, which I thought was, you know, high schoolers getting ready to go into college. But it turned out it was middle schoolers. And I haven't talked to middle schoolers probably since I was in middle school. So... I like to, you know, try to use big words to make people think I'm important. So I had to work hard to like, how am I going to talk? I didn't know what to say or do. I really didn't. There was like 300 kids at this camp. And they had me speaking Tuesday night and Wednesday night. And I, I, I was trying to convince them. I think y'all made a mistake. I, I don't know that this is, this is not my lane. Like, this is not what I do. I don't know. 
if y'all lost a bet, if you're desperate or what, what happened. So I'm getting ready to talk to these kids and I, I really don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm trying to just find a flow and where they're at and, and see, and they were, it was worshiping and they were, they were just beautiful as I was watching all this. But I'm telling y'all, I was scared to death. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to talk to these kids. There's 300 kids waiting to hear something. And so I'm like, maybe I'll take my sock off and do like a high boys and girls. And, but then I realized I didn't, I didn't have, I don't have any socks on. So that ain't going to work. But I have to tell you, in spite of that, and I do mean in spite of that, God moved mightily. And I watched these 300 kids or 250, whatever that number was, these kids just swarmed the altar. And Wednesday night, I said, I want to lay hands on every single child because this is the generation. We're going we're to break everything that all the adults put on you and tell you about your generation's tough and the world's going to hell in a handbasket. You were made, created, and fashioned to change your world right now. We're not going to wait on tomorrow. We're not waiting for you to get older. you got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And the good news is I think they believed it. I really think they believed it. They got it. And so it was exciting. So this week uh, I'll be going to Dallas to, to, to meet and talk with pastors, which is nowhere as fun as talking with kids. But that's just what we have to do. Amen? And I appreciate the support and the love that you allow me to do that because if that's my assignment, that's what I have to do. Yes and amen. All right. Stand up with me real quick. we we'll do something a little different. Just kind of open your heart. You can open your hands if you want to. Just open your heart for a minute. Father, we invite you to do exactly what you desire to do today. We yield ourselves to you. We yield our will, our mind, emotions, thoughts. We ask today, Lord, that you speak exactly what we need and we know that you will. We ask you give us a mind to perceive it and the heart to receive it because we know that our value is in you and you alone. So today, Lord, I pray you hold the mirror of your word in heaven over our hearts that we may see who we are, that we may see we are image bearers of Christ Jesus and that, Lord, we find our value in you today. We thank you for it. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for our family. We're honored and privileged to be here drawing breath today. And we say, do all you desire to do, Holy Spirit, and have your way in the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you guys again for leaning in. It always makes it easier when, when you lean into the things of God. There's an anticipation. You, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? If you just stand up and talk and people are looking at you like a new calf, looking at a gate. Just, they don't know. But I appreciate when y'all lean in. I really do. And I'm grateful that God has put us together for this journey. Because it's getting better and better and gooder and gooder. First Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and as Elizabeth Taylor told one of her eight husbands, I won't be long. That's how we'll roll today. All right, let's talk for a minute. I want to, I want to get, it, I was reminded of this this week in, in talking with the youth um, about some interesting things. I was reminded of this verse in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. This is a good one to kind of commit to your, to your heart to understand because Paul is writing to Timothy. Now, understand, Paul's writing to Timothy. Timothy probably started somewhere around 16 to 20 years of age with Paul in his ministry. So he was a very young man. So somewhere between 16 and 20, we know by dates and timelines that he started in Paul's ministry. But Paul's writing this letter now, and Timothy is somewhere around 30 years of age. And he's walked with Paul, he's grown up underneath his ministry, but he's kind of stepping out into his own ministry. And as he's doing that, and he's gaining his voice and his understanding and his authority and his value, Paul writes to him some instructional things. And here in the fourth chapter... The 12th verse of 1 Timothy, the first letter that he writes to him at about 30, he said, Timothy, let no one despise you for your youth, but be an example to the believers 
And four things he told, six things I think that he told him here. Be an example to the believers in your word and your conduct. How you process the word. In faith and love. And in purity and spirit. He said, I want you to understand you, you cannot let somebody despise you for your youth. Now, there's a lot to unpack in this, but what I want to really focus on for a moment is the phrase, the beginning of that, because that's a principle that he's actually giving Timothy. So we read this today. It's easy to read this scripture and go, ah, let no one despise you for your youth. Well, I don't really have that problem anymore. Some of us have it less than others. <laughs> Y'all sharper than that. Come on. Some of us have it worse than others. Nobody despises me from, Dr. Mary said, you're right. Nobody despises me for my youth anymore. That's not really a challenge that I have. In other words, I don't, I don't very often hear somebody say, you're too young for that. Maybe my AARP card, I don't know. I don't know what the age is on that. But it's a principle that, 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 that Timothy is, is, giving, is receiving from Paul and it, it, it really is, let no one despise you for anything. That's the principle. Let no one despise you for being too elderly. Let no one despise you for your gender. Let no one despise you for your economic status. Let no one despise you for fill in the blank. It's a principle. It's a very powerful principle. And so he said... Timothy, don't let anybody despise you. Timothy was in a place where youth was his issue. You, you're just getting started in something. He said, don't let people despise you for your youth. But it could have filled in anything. And we deal with this through our entire journey. And this is, this is really powerful when you kind of get behind and find out what Paul was telling Timothy. Because it was much deeper than what we see on the, on the, the front end of this, because we think of despise as somebody's against me, they're doing something, but that's not what the word is. It's an interesting word because it's paraphrono in the Greek, for the Greek scholars, paraphrono. Interesting word choice that Paul used. He said, hey, don't let anyone paraphrono you because of fill in the blank. And paraphrono is an interesting word because Paul did not say, hey, don't let anyone uh, because of your youth or whatever you put in that blank, don't let anyone devalue you. But that's not what he said. He didn't use a word that said, don't let them have no value. He could have used both. He could have said, hey, don't let anybody have no value, at, 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 that they see no value in your life. But listen to me, church. This is the amazing thing. Those things are bad. If somebody devalues you, that's bad. If somebody puts no value on you, that's bad. But there's something worse, and it's paraphrono. Paraphrono means don't let anyone put the wrong value on you. Because that's far more dangerous. Far more dangerous. Because the enemy is good at being deceitful and crafty. He's better at it than any, any of us. So we have to be wise and understanding. And what he does is not put no value. If somebody puts no value on you or somebody devalues you, you know what happens? You rise up. Because God made us that way. God made us people of value. I need you guys to hear me this morning for a few minutes. I'll wave the flag if you need me to. I'll do whatever you need me to do to get this in your heart. The enemy, the enemy is very good at knowing that if somebody devalues you, it makes you angry. Your dignity rises up. How dare you? I have value. Whether you do that based on my gender, my economic status, my age, doesn't matter. If you devalue me, I become indignant. How dare you? If I'm a believer, right? Because God put that in us. We know that there's a standard. And I also realize that many times if you put no value on somebody, 
It makes them angry and they want to rise up and go, no, I do have value. I do have. I know I do. So in the craftiness of the enemy, he realizes if I try to devalue you or I try to put no value on you, you will seek out for value and you might find God in that. So the best thing that I can do to dupe you and trick you and deceive you is to put the wrong value on you. So Paul said, Timothy, be careful because people will put the wrong value on you for your age, for your gender, for your fill in the blank. You know, a few years ago, I read an interesting uh, article about some thieves that broke into a jewelry store. They broke into this jewelry store, but instead of stealing stuff, they thought it would be funny to switch the price tags. So they took the $12,000 price tag on the Rolex and went over to the Timex took, and put it on that and took the $99 tag from the Timex and put it on the Rolex. And they did that throughout the store. And the next morning, customers came in. And they started buying things. And some of them paid a lot of money for very inexpensive stuff. Some of them paid a little money for very expensive stuff. We live in a culture today that has switched the price tag on value. This is not where you get religious on me. We value shiny cars and suits and clothes and things that make us look good and feel good. And there's nothing wrong with those things if you have the proper price tag on them. But if you put the wrong value on them, the enemy will then get you duped that you think what you do on the outside is more important than what's happening on the inside. The price tag should be on integrity and family and kingdom function and how I function in that, not on what I wear or drive or how I look or what my bank account has. All of those have value, but they're not to be compared to the value that God has put on the inside of me. And the most dangerous thing that every single one of us did, well, I don't care how long we've walked with the Lord. I don't care how many times we've read through the Bible. We're all in the place. The enemy is good at putting the wrong value on us if we're not careful. We could go through a hundred examples, but that's the job of the Holy Spirit to enlighten us and to know that's the wrong value. Young, young women get into selling their bodies and giving their bodies away because of a wrong value system. Young men chase those things because of wrong value systems. On and on and on we could go and find examples. The point is that we must be in tune with the Holy Spirit and understand that the only value system that will ever give me my value is from the Lord God Almighty, my maker. Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. Value is an inside job. Not an outside job. You can go to every support group, every counselor, every psychologist. All have their place. They all have value. They're all wonderful. Sometimes some of you may need to go to the psychologist. Heard a lot of married people say amen. (laughs) Those things have value. But the only place I will ever find my true value is from the creator who made me. And knows the purpose and value of who I am. And you could spend your life as a Christian. As a believer. Trying to find your value on stuff. How many scriptures you can quote. How well you know the Bible. Let's don't go down that road. All of which has value. But that is not my value in Christ. That stands alone in Christ. Because otherwise we get in. We get into a completely different concept. Which is we, we feel worthy or unworthy. We say that in the church all the time. It's my least absolute. Cannot stand that phrase. I will tackle you, take you to the ground if I hear it come out of your mouth. 
I'm unworthy. Come on. Sent his son and died, and that's, I'm unworthy. And here's the problem. The word worthy is, is a, an earned measure. It's, it, should never be, it should never be meant for humanity. Worthiness is not, that's only God. That stands alone. That's not a human or a human attribute in which we even describe. That goes to God. Only God is worthy. I have value. And the worth that I have is in the value in Christ. That has to do with me finding my right place. And that only comes from God. Each, each ve- as a vessel, your usefulness is defined, it de- defines your value. The usefulness that I have in Christ defines my value, lets me see it. I'm valuable in him. But for me to see that, I have to be useful in Christ. I don't, I, I don't feel like we caught that. I feel like that rolled right off the stage and flopped. <laughs> When I, when I come to Christ, when I give my life, there, there is the value. It's done. You're as valuable as you ever see. That's what happens. That's why religion kills people. That's what happens when God interacts and looks at you. He doesn't see your mistakes or your flesh or your challenge. He sees the value of Christ. That's what he sees. You, you're preaching good, Don. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. I can encourage myself. So God doesn't, when I have an an interaction, God doesn't look at my faults and what I do. He looks at the value. So his interaction is based on my value system, which is very high. He said, you're very valuable to me. Yes, Lord, but I'm just a wooden cup. I'm not a gold bar. I know, but I need that wooden cup has great value to me. And I need that in my life. I need that in my kingdom. I need that to function. But if we get stuck with the wrong value, you will spend your life in a cyclical pattern. Trying to do good. Trying to do stuff. And if you don't think there is an entire system designed to give you the wrong value, you've been sleeping. The entire thing is designed to give you a wrong value system whereby you chase that value system and you never understand that when you wake up in the morning, you go, man, I am valuable. I am valuable today because of what Christ Jesus did in me. Not because of who I am, but because of who he is in me. Value is an inside job. God came and gave me value through Jesus Christ. But we get so stuck, church. So stuck in the wrong things. So my question is for you today, and I'm, I'm done. Because all I can do is just drop this in your spirit and let the Holy Spirit work. Because value, value is the thing when nobody's around. It's when you look in the mirror. It's when you have yourself thoughts. You begin to devalue yourself because you're looking in the wrong mirror. You don't have what somebody else has and you haven't had the level of success and you haven't done this and you're not that smart. And you don't have that and you don't have this. and All of these things constantly surround us and give us a mirror to look at and go, I, I, I'm not very valuable. So you de- devalue yourself. And then the, once you begin to do that, the enemy comes in and then puts the wrong value on you. And once he has the wrong value on you, you begin to chase the wrong things. And you lose the joy and the strength and the blessing. And God goes, why are you chasing that? You're valuable to me. And the more you find your usefulness in Christ, the more that becomes apparent to you. That's why it's important to be involved. What in the world? Where'd he come from? Sorry if that hurt anybody's feelings, but that was a for real uh, wasp. So I'm not going to mess with him. Bible says he put everything under my feet. Sorry, buddy. 
Nothing like a good prop. They just released him. Come up here. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to leave today with something that, that, that is on the inside of you. That you realize you have to let your value come from the Lord. I'm not talking about I'm saved and I'm going to heaven and all of that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And if you don't know the fullness of Christ, you'll never find your true value. It's not a free ticket to get out of jail. It is. But it's so much more than that. It's the joy and the strength and the blessing of life. It's all that God promised us. And if you're looking for your value from your mate, from society, from your job, from your bank account, from your makeup, from your suit, from your car, listen, I'm, I promise you it's going to let you down every time. But when you find it in Christ, then, then, Paul said, if you don't let anybody, if you don't let anybody put the wrong value on you, you'll be able to be an example to believers. In how you process the word and purity. And he gives us these, these things to walk out because he said, when you find your value. And it's so difficult to try to find the joy and the strength and the blessing and the power of God working in our lives when we have a wrong value system of where we're looking. There is nothing more powerful to you than to understand where that comes from. And you have to walk that out. It's not just I'm in Christ, but you have to let Christ work out through you. Stand with me. I want you to, I want you to hear me today because these things are so important in our life you have to stop discrediting yourself and your value which becomes easy to do you have to understand how indispensable you are as a vessel of the Lord I said you have to understand how indispensable you are indispensable well I don't know if I'm able capable worthy I don't know if I if I have any value you wouldn't be here if you didn't God does not create things without value as the old saints used to say it God don't make junk But you have to stop discrediting yourself and your value based on the things that you see around you that you shouldn't even be measuring. Comparisonitis is the worst disease in the world. Put you at an unfair advantage to compare. And you're the only vessel like this. What are you comparing against? In real estate, we say there's no comparables. Because your gift is your gift. You're unique. Each of us in Christ. But you have to stop discrediting yourself. You have to stop looking around and saying, yeah, that's, that's where I'm getting my value. And I want to do something today a little bold for us, maybe. But if you're here and you go, yep. I identify with that. I, 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 I can see where I'm literally placing the wrong value in my life. And it has me in this challenge. Because listen to me. You will not find the fullness of Christ. I'm not talking about going to heaven. But understand me? I'm talking about walking in your fullness on the earth. Not hiding in a cave waiting to get to heaven. But being useful as a vessel on the earth. That has to do with your value and who you are in Christ. And if you're here and you say, I, I can admit that I've probably been comparing my value to the wrong thing and it's allowed the wrong value system on my life. 
I want you to come down here. I want to pray for you. I want to lay hands on you and touch you and believe God. Don't worry about anybody else. You know the drill. Don't get your head caught up in stuff. You, 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 you obey the Lord. It's, it's imperative. Make, make enough room between the lines, please, front and back, because I want to touch every person and lay hands on Transnuma migration is the official term. It's the transferring spirits. It's the value of that when God has an anointing on something, you can pray and you can do that. That's what we're going to do today. Give me enough room to go in between aisles, if you would. Just make clean lines so that I can pray. And I want you, as we begin to worship the Lord, as we begin to pray I want you to understand how desperate God is that may not be the right word but it's the one I'm going to use for us to see our value you imagine being in a relationship with somebody that had no value that'd be terrible that's not attractive that's not humility you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that says, well, I'm unworthy. I can't do that. You don't like me. I'm ugly. I don't, you don't want to be around me. It's not attractive, is it? No. But yet we do that with the Lord. We have a language. I'm unworthy. I'm not able. Where, how did you come up with that? Where did you get that system? Because that's not God's system. That's not God's system. That's not in this book. I promise you that. That's not in God's heart. So we have to stop and go, you know what? I'm worthy in Christ because he's worthy. He's the only one that's worthy. God is the only one that's worthy. But my usefulness because of my value in Christ is where God uses me. And we have this beautiful relationship based on him not me the best place to begin to find your value is in worship that's the best place to begin to find your value so I want us to begin to worship with a worshipful spirit because that's where we begin to find our value as we begin to truly worship God and we realize I'm not looking out here I close my eyes and I worship him and as I worship him my value increases it grows something happens on the inside that opens up that I find so I want you out of your out of your heart right now. Close your eyes. Don't just just for no other reason. Other spiritual than that. Just close your eyes to minimize the distraction. Because this is you and your Lord. And I want you to focus for a moment that all the times the enemies lied to you and the things that are around you that you've allowed to devalue. You. Because the, you know what that is? That's the opposite of worship. That's focused on me not God. And worship is where I focus totally on Him and I begin to gain my value. And I'm not going to let the world system or anybody around me put the wrong value on me. I am His and He is mine. I belong to Him. Now I want you to begin to lift your hands, your heart, your mouth towards heaven and begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him, the value and the worthiness of who He is as the Lord God Almighty. Begin to worship Him and thank Him. As He releases value.
caught up in natural stuff that we forget we want to make God too practical here's what I know is going on right now there's a there's a, a an operating table and God is operating on us that's what he does we have to let him do that so I want you to stay in that that mode if you haven't been prayed for and you want to be please step to the front here we'll just kind of exchange but stay in worship stay in worship what we what we ask today we've asked God to do what only God can do. So if we don't make room and let God do it, it can't be done. No man can give that. I can't give that to you. I'm just a vessel. You could have a donkey up here and get the same result. God is operating, bringing us to a place because we have been duped in many ways in finding our value. And we've, we've got it from the wrong places. So let's let God do what God does, okay? So just, if you've been prayed for, you can just kind of let everybody come to the front that has not been prayed for. I want to make sure we lay hands on every person. Stay in worship. Don't get distracted. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Stay in the focus, okay? Just stay in worship for a moment. We're just going to make sure that everybody that gets prayed for, that wants to get prayed for, because this is very, very important. We'll talk about coming up, why this is so important, why God has to have this. Because without value, we don't do things that we're supposed to be doing for the Lord. So it's paramount. So stay in worship. Come on, stay in worship. Mario, lead us in.
We don't have to understand everything God does. I, I love, I prayed over 300 kids that I don't think had a clue on, on Wednesday. But I didn't care because I wasn't talking to their mind. Something happens in the interaction of a person's spirit and that takes years to develop and to grow. The Holy Spirit can drop 10 decades of dialogue in your spirit in half a second, take it to unfold. What happens when you come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which I recommend highly, that you come to. What happens is you have the immediate value of heaven. You're as valuable as you're ever going to get. But the unfolding of that revelation takes a lifetime. You can walk with God your whole life. And God said there's yet more value. As long as you have breath, there's more value to be revealed to you. You don't get to a, a knowledge of Greek, Hebrew, Latin, or anything else and go, man, I got it all. No, it's a constant unfolding and walking with the Lord. God will never make himself unvaluable in your life. He'll never make himself unnecessary. So walking with God is a journey. And the more we walk at intervals, he said, I am going to show you a new level of value. So regardless of where you're at, the reason that we're doing this is because God said, I'm showing my people a new value that they have in me. And when you find that value, you find a power system that is able to change the world you live in. You cannot change it if you are of it. You cannot change it if you are of it. You have to be otherly, which is where God's spirit comes alive in us. As it does, it allows us to change the systems that we're in. What we've done is try to get out of the systems and get together and hide and leave the, the world to go to hell in a handbasket. But that's never been God's plan. He said, I have put value and power and authority in you to stand in a place where others would melt and drown and walk on top of what anybody else would drown in because of the Spirit of God that lives in me. And like never before, we must in word and conduct show who we are in Christ and the value that we have together as God's people. So God is saying, I'm showing you a new level of value. Not that you didn't know you had value. The challenge becomes is that it starts becoming tainted with the world. And before long, we have the wrong value systems. And he's purifying his people again to understand my value is not in what I do. It's in him. Then what I do is a reflection of my relationship with him. So I want one more time before we leave, if we can, let's just sing that again and let's just worship God because it is his goodness, his good pleasure to bless his people. And I know that God does something beyond what we feel or our comprehension when he gives us a word and a decree. And I know that your value has increased today in your understanding of who you are in Christ. God's value didn't increase. Ours did in him. Let's worship him. Let's thank him for it. That's the way we say thank you, Father, is how we worship him. Can we do that again? Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Oh
before whoever's in charge of this place comes up here. We're going to have a ministry fair afterwards. I hope you can stay around and see what's going on and where you can become a part of that because it's imperative that when we talk about value, that's first seen in how we serve one another and how we love one another. That's why it's important. I hope you can find a place to get involved and be involved because how we love and serve each other is the first place we find and show people our value. So I hope you'll do that. Love on somebody. Give somebody a good word today. Give, show, them, show them, man, God put some, some new value. I, I, I see some new stuff. Encourage somebody today. Speak a good word to them. Say something wonderful. And this week, be ready. Just be ready. God is doing stuff that we cannot comprehend, church. You might, you might be speaking to middle schoolers. You don't know. Whatever it is, do it with all your heart and understand the value you have in Christ and encourage one another. Miss Pam, God bless you.